short rest time. I want to spend some hit dice and recover some of those sweet, sweet hit points. All right, cool. How many hit points did you get down and how much did you get back? Uh, 70 hit points and I got back 22 hit points. How? We're 10th level. How many hit dice did you spend? All 10 of them? Plus my con mod? I rolled terribly. How about we discuss the Gift of the Ever-Living ones for 5th edition D&D? Hello and welcome to Nerdarchy for Nerds by Nerds. I'm Nerdarchist Dave, and as usual, I'm joined by this nerd. Nerdarchist Ted. Make sure that D&D content lives on in your YouTube feed by Eldrick's blasting that subscribe button. And keep that pack strong with Nerdarchy by attuning to that notification bell so you don't miss a single video. Hey, before we jump into our video, I want to take a moment to thank our sponsor, Easy Roller Dice. Whether it's your first set of dice or your one millionth set of dice, Easy Roller Dice for all your needs. Down in the description, you'll find a link and a one-time promo code for a whopping 25% off. That's right, 25% off. Go click that link and get yourself some Easy Roller Dice. This video was, uh, you know, kind of inspired by, uh, you know, Nerd or Doug. Uh, you know, and this this concept of the, the ever living and how awesome this ability is. So let's dive into it. All right. So, uh, you know, I think we twisted his initial concept a little bit. He wanted to do something about Mumra and Mum uh, Mutt <laughs> from Thundercats. <laughs> but I started looking at the uh, the uh, invocation from the Warlock and I was like, you know, we could actually dive into this one. And honestly, when I first read this one, Earlier, I was like, ah, this one's kind of mad to me. I don't think this is really that great of an invocation. I would never take this one. Gift of the Ever Living Ones. Uh, prerequisite is Pact of the Chain feature. Whenever you gain hit points while you're familiar with, is within 100 feet of you, treat any dice roll to determine the hit points you regain as ro having rolled their maximum value for you. So, I, you know, after doing this video, I, I, I must say, I think I've come around a little bit. <laughs> Absolutely, you know the you know you, when you look at all the different ways that you can uh, roll dice to recover hit points, that is drastic. And how frequently are you going to be regaining hit points when your familiar isn't within a hundred feet of you? Uh, I think it's totally crazy. Uh, I, I think this one might be uh, you know uh, just just too much. All right, so. Let, we're going to look at how many features, spells, feats, and magic items can work with this benefit and tally them up. We're going to start with race. I didn't find, I don't think there's any races where you actually roll to get hit, point ba hit points back. So there aren't any, like Azimar can do healing, but it's a set number. Um, if I'm missing anything, we've got the comments. Let, let me and the rest of the community know what we missed. All right, so there's looking at classes. There are so many. It's kind of kind of ridiculous. And right off the bat, we're just going to take a, a slice off and look at spell casting. So anything that's going to restore hit points, that's rolling dice, your healing word, your cure wounds, your mass of such versions, all of those are going to apply here. So go ahead and take them and just push them to the side. Yeah, we came up with like 15, not including spells, 15 features that are going to be useful. And here's the fun thing about this ability. You don't have to be the one to initiate that process. You just have to regain hit points. So not only is it going to work with the things that you do, but it can also work with the things that other people in your party do for you. And that's a very important point. And the other thing is, like, if you just wanted to take advantage of this ability, three levels of Warlock is going to do it for you. It's going to get you a bunch of cool stuff, but you're also going to get to take this invocation and use it going forward with anything you multi-class into. So first up for our classes, we have Artificer. So um, there's the Alchemist and the Battlesmith. Both of those two have features that are useful for you. The Artificer is going to give you Experimental Elixir, which basically you make, make a healing potion that does two die four plus your int mod. So for you, it's not, it's just eight plus int mod. Whether you make it yourself or give it to someone else, Battlebaster has a cool one as well called Arcane Jolt, and basically, your your uh, Iron Defender can, has this ability where it can either do damage or can heal somebody. So you know it heals or damages for like two dice six. At some point, it goes up. But hey, you know you know what you are. You're a warlock of, with with the gifts of the ever living one. So it's always maximum. Arcane Jolt is a ninth level ability. Exper Experimental Elixir is only a, a third level ability. 
Uh, next up, we're going to look at Bard. And, you know, this is, you know, uh, an ever-growing uh, ability for the Bard. It starts off at a D6, works its way all the way up to a D12. Uh, so if, if you happen to, you know, either be on the recipient end of this or, you know, you are the, the ever-living one, uh, you could be really helping out your party by uh, maximizing, you know, those those healings. Yeah. Um, next up, we've got the cleric. And uh, with the cleric, we're going to be looking at the peace domain. And that's a channel divinity bomb of peace. Two die six plus your wisdom mod. It's a second level ability, uh, which is awesome. So uh, plus you're a cleric and you also have access to spells. Uh, next up, we have the, the Druid, and for this one, we're looking at the Circle of Dreams, and this is the Balm of the Summer Court. You're gonna, you have this pool of D6s equal to half your Druid level, uh, so it's, it's super, super awesome to just be able to, like, all right, I'm gonna heal you, I'm gonna heal you, I'm gonna heal you, uh, and, you know, if you're combining this with, you know, that pact, super helpful. Yeah, and you get that right away, too, at second level which is super cool. So you can begin dap dipping into that. Or if you know other players in the game, if they're using it to your benefit, super sweet. Uh, Circle of Dreams, we don't stop there though. We also have a Circle of Stars, uh, which when you use your starry form, the chalice, you can uh, cast healing on, on yourself and others. And you get a die eight plus your wisdom mod. And eventually it goes up to two die eight plus your wisdom mod at 10th, starts at second level. So right away, you can gain the benefit of that, whether you're using it or someone else is using it on you. Uh, but again, we're still not done with Druid. Uh, Circle of the Moon, uh, you, you've got the ability eventually to sack out your your Druid spell slots to heal while you are wild shaped. So you're recovering dice, or you're recovering hit points, so totally gonna work here. Now, obviously this is one where you actually have to be the Druid to make it, to have it work for you. And again, this is an ability that starts off right away, pretty much for the Circle Moon Druid when you get it at second level. Um, next up, Circle of Wildfire. Uh, this is another fun ability that they have that they, they can use uh, on you, or you can take advantage of it by being them. Yeah, and I think uh, the Circle of Wildfire mixed with a uh, a Warlock, you know, you've, who you've already got, you know, packed to the chains, you've got a familiar. Uh, I think you could definitely have some fun with, you know, that kind of build as a uh, as a companion type uh, type character. Yeah, and, and also, so they get a couple abilities too. Enhanced Bond, at you know, they get um, at sixth level, and that is whenever their companion is near them. Uh, is near when it's getting healed they get the extra diet healing when it's done from them also they have cauterizing flames is basically when they kill things on the battlefield they create these little bonfires and as a reaction the circle of the wildfire druid can cause that to either harm someone that goes through it or heal them so again two die 10 plus wisdom modifier uh you know if, if you're have the gift of the ever living one that's just 20 plus wisdom mod uh, next up, we have Fighter and Second Wind. It's a you know super low level ability. You roll a d10, you add your level. It's great, <laughs> you know, to just be able to max that out to a, a straight d10. Super helpful. This is only going to be for you, so like this would you'd have to couple that with the Warlock Pact in order to get it. But again, helpful. Yeah, I mean, it's still it's still really cool, and literally you could just dip on level of Fighter and take that if you wanted to take advantage of it. Next up, we have Monk. Uh, for Monk, we have to dip into the optional rules. So if you're allowing them in your game, uh, Monks can get quickened healing. And that's basically, they get to use a martial arts die to heal themselves for two key points starting at fourth level. Uh, you know, you can only do it to yourself. So clearly this has got to be a multi-class option. But also within Monk, we've got Way of the Mercy. Uh, they've got healing hands. So for a single key point, they can heal uh, uh, equal to their martial arts die plus their wisdom modifier. Uh, they can keep doing it as long as they've got key points. So useful. Uh, so this is even if this is done to you and you're the warlock, it'll work. Yeah. So next up is Paladin and Oath of the Crown. So Oath of the Crown's channel divinity turn the tide is, you know, basically everyone within um, I think it's like 30 feet can get a die six plus charisma modifier 
hit points back. So whether you're doing it to yourself or having it done to you, you can just max the, uh, max that out. The caveat is you everyone who takes advantage of this has to be, you know, wounded at you know, at least half their hit points. And it's a third level ability that they can get access to. So next up is the Warlock. And for this one, we're looking at Celestial. So it's possible that you could have the Celestial as your patron and your Pact is of, of the Chains. Uh, but, you know, however you want to do it, whether it's you're the, you're the Warlock or there's another Warlock on the party, you've got Healing Light. And the way this works is you have a, a pool of dice equal to your level plus one, and they are D6s. And you can only ever spend a number of dice equal to your Charisma modifier. Uh, but hey, rolling, rolling D6s to, you know, help heal yourself or someone else, totally a Celestial thing. Yeah, except for, you know, if you have the gift of the ever living one, no rolling required. And you're just going to get back the max. So that's kind of cool. And like and like Ted said, you could actually have taken this patron. And even if you only do three levels, that still gives you four dice to play with. You get it at first level. Super sweet. So the genie, this one is kind of it, it, it's affecting and it's not. Um, it's a 10th level ability, so you're gonna have to stick it out for a while if you wanted to gain access of it, to it. But I also feel like this would be a cool genie, uh, genie gift. So, but at 10th level, what you can do is you can all go into your uh, vessel. It's called Sanctuary Vessel, actually, and take a short rest. It only takes 10 minutes. And I know this has nothing to do with the dice, but like that's where you would spend your hit die. And you could do it in 10 minutes instead of an hour. And there's like Song of Rest that we mentioned earlier that would stack with that. Um, and there's also some other things we're going to talk about that would also stack with it as well. So I just thought it was an interesting caveat that's tangentially related, but not directly. So next up, we have the, the Undying within Warlock. Uh, and this is Defy Death. Uh, so if you are forced to make a death saving throw, you're automatically stabilized and you heal 1 die 8 plus your con mod. Uh, in this case, we wouldn't be rolling the dice if we happen to, you know, have this particular invocation. Yeah, and it's great. Or if someone uses Spare the Dying on you that uh, that has this particular ability, um, you would just jump up with 8 plus con modifier. So it works out really good. There might be some others that we missed. I don't know. Let us know in the comments below. You know, are you using this invocation? What have you combined it with? Next up, we've got feats. I mean, there's five of them that I think kind of apply. You know, first off, Artificer Initiate. This is going to give you access to some Artifice spells. Super helpful, you know, for this one. You've got Chef, which is going to give you the ability to make treats that you're going to be able to use during that short rest that Dave was mentioning not all that long ago. Uh, Dwarven Fortitude lets you uh, take the dodge action and get a hit die back. So if you happen to be a dwarf and you happen to have this, this uh, invocation, um, you can just maximize that effect. Healer is, and when someone has a healer kit, they basically uh, can heal you for a die six plus four plus your level, I think it is. Uh, so you won't roll that die six. It's just going to be 10 plus your level. Super sweet. And then magic initiate for the same reason we said before. If you take something that gives you access to healing magic, well, then it's going to apply. All right, so next we're gonna look at magic items. And the first one is, you know, a little amusing and seems almost counterintuitive, but Amulet of the Drunkard. This is gonna allow you to essentially once a day create a brew that you can drink, and it's gonna heal you four die four plus four, as I said, once a day. But in this case, you know, you're restoring hit points. So bam, maxed, yeah. 20 hit points. We came up with like nine different magic items. There might be more. Let us know if we miss any. Next up, we got the Icon of Ravenloft. It gives you access to Cure Wounds at uh, third level, three die eight plus three. So, you know, you're just going to get 24, 27 back automatically once a day. Nice. You know, Kiag's Ointment is going to give you, you know, a very similar ability. Uh, it's a second level Cure Wounds, two die eight plus two, or bam, 18 hit points. A Necklace of Prayer Beads. Cure Wounds, again, as a second level spell. This is a reoccurring theme. The Periapt of Wound Closure uh, doubles the number of hit points you gain from spent hit dice. Uh, so when you're already maximizing them, this would be a really good ability or really good magic item to, to, to be angling for for your character because uh, you're going to spend hit dice so much less than anybody else. Yeah, it, it's, it's almost a must-have item for this 
for this, you know, anything used in this build. And it's only one of the abilities. It also like automatically stabilizes you as well. It might do some other things. Don't remember off the top of my head, but for the build, that was the important point. You know, doubling from your, your hit dice, super useful. Um, also, obviously healing potions, all the healing potions are gonna be super useful for this character. They're gonna benefit from them uh, greatly. Ring of Regeneration, 1d6 hit points restored every 10 minutes. It's going to be maximized, so, you know, every 10 minutes you get back six. Uh, yeah, that's uh, another one. These ones are a little bit harder to find, but, you know, definitely worth it if you can nab one. Rod of Security it has a bunch of things that it does, but the one that I was looking at is when you use it to create this paradise space in there, uh, you just get one hit dice uh, per uh, hour spent in there back. So it's just like a freebie thing. And, you know, obviously anything that, requ that is going to give us dice to roll for healing, we're going to like that. Uh, last but not least, the Staff of Healing. Uh, you know, this is just a staff that's got a whole bunch of charges and a whole bunch of healing spells in it, as you would expect. Uh, you know, it's a healing spell. It's going to do what it's supposed to do. So one of the things we haven't mentioned yet, but is really... I think important to this build and understanding it is the fact that you have so much control over regaining hit points in the sense that like, because there's no randomness, like you always know how much you need of a resource to spend, how many hit dice, how many healing spells, things like that. You're never going to overuse them or underuse them because it's just a set number for you. Absolutely. I, th I think this is, you know, part of the, the game that I know a lot of people enjoy is you know that you know that perfect use of resources and it doesn't matter whether you're talking about consumable items whether you're talking about spell slots or you know thing, things that come back uh you know wherever the source is coming from you never have to worry about those dangers those fears it's just fantastic i i you know i i think this is a really cool concept and you can mix it so easily and technically you know because we're just talking about, you know, building off of a single invocation, it can really apply to almost any type of character, you know, uh, whether you go all Warlock, whether you go, you know, just that three level dip into Warlock and you mix it with anything else, it only requires you to have the 13 charisma and you can maximize whatever other stats you're using for the other classes that you're, you're looking at, um, you know, and then you just have, have fun with why you chose that invocation you know oh or not necessarily that invocation but why, why you chose that pact you know you know are you a positive force and you went with a celestial and it all makes sense that you're you know that that goody goody character and you really do have reasons of why you you know are staying alive or you know are you a more nefarious or shady character and you're constantly doing dangerous things so you made this pact just so that you can recover, you know, that much easier, that much faster than everyone else. Yeah, like I said, this is one that was overlooked by me and I didn't realize how versatile it was going to be. We came, without even looking at spells, we came up with 29 different ways to, you know, maximize this ability. I mean, some of them are magic idols and they're kind of powerful, but also I've seen the things like the parry up of um, wound, wound closure come up a bit. Uh, Kiag's ointment has come up in our games. Obviously, healing spells come up in our games, and there's probably things that I'm not that I totally missed or I'm not thinking about. Uh, so yeah, and really for a three level dip, maybe you want to go to four because you want to get the ASI. In Warlock, you're going to get some cool, flavorable things. You know, one of the things that the Warlock is kind of known for is Eldritch Blast. That's going to scale with you even if you multi-class. Hex is always going to be good and is going to work with whatever else you're doing pretty much. So, you know, four levels of Warlock, you can, or if you want to just go with three, you can. You can then use this to really play around with and make some interesting builds. Maybe later on we will make one if you guys demand it enough. But, you know, if you like Warlock videos and you want more Warlock in your life, then you can check out D&D Killer Combo, Secret Weapon of the Warlock. If you want to help support Nerdarchy in creating more content, why not check us out over on Patreon? As a special thank you, you receive monthly rewards like automatically being entered in monthly giveaways, getting access to 5e content for players and DMs alike, and more. So until next time, 
Stay nerdy. Stay nerdy.